Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be looking at not one, not two, not three, but four Transformers because we're going to be looking at the Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy, Buzzworthy Bumblebee, yeah a little bit of a crossover in lines there, four pack known as the Worlds Collide, that's going to be our focus this time around in the latest Scott by True Review. Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Godfather. As always, man, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, while you're at a lot of my baby, and hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton of let you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all my social media links, all of that in the description down below. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer you, offer to you through Teespring, or of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube to become a channel member. And this is going to be my look at the Worlds Collide 4-pack. I am not going to be looking at the transformations, for the most part anyway. Um, I will talk about them in reference to other characters. Uh, I, a couple of times, bear with me for a few seconds, a couple of times the focus goes out. It doesn't last very long, just a few seconds. Uh, in the interest of time, I did not go back and refilm that because it's not super duper important. Uh, I think it's like um, Black Arachnia's knee bend, and I think it's when I'm setting her up again. Something like that. It's uh, an interesting set, but is it a necessary set? Well, we're about to find out when we head over to the table and take a closer look at these four. And yes, indeed, the Buzzworthy Bumblebee line crosses over with the War for Cybertron Trilogy to give us the four-pack of Worlds Collide. And this is a really weird four-pack. Really weird four-pack. We have a, uh, like, original toy accurate version of Black Arachnia. We have a very stylized Bumblebee. We have a full deluxe, finally, of Fangry, and a reuse of the... Kingdom Optimus Primal Mold as now Nemesis Primal. We're going to look at each of these pretty quickly. We're not going to have to do the transformations. We've done all of that before. But before we can look at the characters and assess them, we have to look at that packaging first. And yes, indeed, here we have the packaging. It's like a honeycomb background, which makes sense for Bumblebee. We have like some evergreen designs and whatnot over on this side. They wrap around to the side. We have the names down front, of course. The branding for War for Cybertron up there and for Buzzworthy Bumblebee down in the other corner. Um, Bumblebee on this side. And when we turn around here on the back, of course, you can see the product images in kind of both modes. It is really typical packaging. Ooh, we've got a gigantic set of instructions that covers a lot of stuff that really I think most of us already know. Then we have what has quickly become one of my favorite accessories. This is the AllSpark. It's included here. This is obviously the War for Cybertron iteration of the AllSpark. It does have molded in detail, which is kind of cool. Um, I, I, I like it. I dig it. Uh, it's something different than a, than a Matrix. To some people, the AllSpark will be a square a la the movies. To others, it'll be sort of a spherical, kind of like Vector Sigma a la G1. But this is the War for Cybertron version. It's more, I don't know, hexagonal, octagonal. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but like, I, this works for me. Yeah, I look at this and think to myself, yeah, that's the Allspark. And so we kick things off with Nemesis Primal first. Of course, he is shown here with my Netflix Optimus Primal. I looked at the uh, Kingdom Optimus Primal in episode 832, and he got tens across the board. I looked at the Netflix version here in episode 854, along with Rat Trap, and he got about 9.9 .9 across the board, 9.8, 9.9, because his coloration isn't exactly show accurate. So I did mark it down a little bit there. At least not accurate to the original Beast Wars. Obviously, it is more accurate to the uh, like Netflix series, so... You know, if that's what you're going for, then this Optimus Primal is also tens across the board. The transformation is kind of smooth and easy. The articulation is great. 
what about with Nemesis Primal? Well, let me sort of, you can see, first of all, that they play off each other nicely here, but let me sort of straighten them up, and then we'll get into his scores. So I'm going to tell you now, across the boards, we're starting off real strong, because Nemesis Primal here is going to be 10s again. We don't really have a reference, per se, for uh, the coloration, but you know what? The metallic teal blue, I don't know what you want to call it, along with the silver that's on here, really makes this guy pop. He is your typical nemesis colors with black and tealy and purple. I love that his blades of his swords are red. They do still store on the back as they do with Optimus Primal. And of course they can go in his hands, no problem at all. I do like the remolded head. You know, it's funny. When Optimus Primal first came out 25 years or so ago, I remember then looking and saying, oh, he has Optimus Prime's head with the faceplate, neat. And then the show came on and he had the mouth, and I was like, this is, I don't like this. But all these years later, it has become an iconic look for him, so I do prefer him with, like, the mouth. However, um, because the faceplate, you know, is a battle mask, I do think that for Nemesis Prime, it's something a little more a little more menacing about it for him to have the faceplate. So remolded head, I absolutely dig it. Even the eyes almost feel a little squinted to me, like he's you know like he's gearing up, like I don't have nice things to say about you. You know, like that's that's how it comes across to me in terms of the articulation. Again, I mean, we still have the head that can go left and right and up and. Not really down, per se, but a little wiggle there. Uh, this chest piece, of course, still moves like it did on the original, sort of, kind of. The shoulder goes all the way around, goes all the way out to the side. We have a bicep swivel. We have an elbow very deep, over 90 degrees. Uh, we have wrist rotation? Uh, I don't think we have a wrist. Hmm, I thought we did, though. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we've got a wrist. Uh, I also don't have the forearm blasters pushed out here. I guess I should. They are also painted that metallic-y blue color. I gotta... It's kind of going off screen here. Uh, they're also painted that kind of metallic-y, tealy blue color. <laughs> color. We have a waist. Um, in case you didn't see it, we do have an elbow. We do have of over 90 degrees. We do have wrist swivel. Articulated fingers that open and close at a base pin. Um, I said waist already. The legs, they can go all the way forward. The legs can go all the way back. We have a knee to 90 degrees at the very least. And getting the arms here kind of out of the way. We have the legs able to go, you know, well out to the side. Toe tilt, up and down, ankle tilt on both, um, and I guess you can put the toes down. You can't really put them up, but you can put the toes down, so, you know, that's cool too. Again, 10, like it has really everything I could want it to have. We have seen the transformation from robot to gorilla in episode 832. We've seen it in reverse going from Gorilla back to Robot in episode 854. So, now we can just go to both of these guys in their Gorilla mode, and it looks kind of like this. And I think this is pretty cool, man. I dig it. So, obviously, Optimus Prime looks like your kind of typical Gorilla. The colors on the Netflix one are definitely darker than they are on the, like, stock Kingdom release. Then we get to Nemesis, and Nemesis has red eyes and purple fingers and a purple chest and purple face. In other words, the things that are like lighter gray on Optimus Primal are purple on Nemesis Primal. And I think that makes sense. I, I, I mean, he looks a little bit irradiated or something like that. But you know what? Like, when have you seen a purple gorilla? You know, like it looks like this is going to be trouble. Like if I saw this animal in the wild, I'd, I'd be like, you know what? There's something wrong with that animal. It's obviously sick or something. I think I should back away. Um, so like, I think it works. I, I, I never, this is an example of, I didn't know I needed an Optimus Primal until I had an Optimus Primal. So very strong start. Also, some people have said that with Nemesis Primal, they find the joints super tight. Mine are just like butter. They're the exact same as they are on my Netflix release and everything is tight but not too tight. Nothing is loose but everything feels like it's tolerance really well. So tens across the board, excellent start. 
And then we have yet another version of Bumblebee. And I say that because here are many a Bumblebee. Let me just move it down here a little bit because it's a, it's a little off center there. Many other Bumblebee are here, of course. Now, to be fair, usually when I have looked at this mold, like, I've kind of given the same scores. The thing that changes is the, like, paint apps and that sort of look. I'll say this. Right down on the far end down here, we have KBB Hornet's Agent, who I think is absolutely tremendous. I love it. I think it might be an ideal B. It is an upsized version of the original New Age. Then we have the four-pack one next to it using the, you know, hubcap, cliff jumper, um, bug bite mold. And I feel like what they did here is they said, well, we have a bunch of extra bumblebee heads and a bunch of extra yellow plastic, and we still have a bunch of bodies from Hubcap. Why don't we just slap some bumblebee heads on those bodies, and man, it'll be great. It'll be just grand. Um, like, I feel like that's all the thought that went into it. Or, when they did the Netflix one here, which doesn't really look like the way he looked in that show, but when they did the Netflix one here, maybe they weren't sure if they were going to get the license to give him his proper beetle mode, so they said, uh, we're going to, here's our mock-up of our just-in-case, you know, the licensed version doesn't work. The licensed version worked, and they said, well, what do we do with this mock-up? And they said, Psh, put it in a four-pack. Like, I, I feel like Bumblebee is the afterthought here. And, of course, we have the Origins Bumblebee down here. Uh, I, here's what I would say. I like the color of this one better than the Netflix one. Like, it's that Bumblebee type of yellow to me rather than that kind of orangish yellow. The body is obviously off. The head is Bumblebee inspired, I'm going to say. Like, it, it's the same head that's on the Netflix, but I don't feel like that really is perfect. Like, the brow is too low. I don't know. Something. Uh, but, like, it is what it is. I guess it's fine. So, in terms of looks for this guy, I'm going to say it's seven and a half, maybe. Seven. Like, you, you know it's Bumblebee, but, like, I look at this and I think, maybe I should cut off those horns and make this guy into Bumper. You know? Like... I, I'm kind of thinking a bumper head would work here. I, I get why they didn't do it as Buzzworthy Bumblebee, but I think everybody looks at this and thinks, well, it's really hubcap, and you know what? The only one we don't have is bumper, so a bumper head would be gangbusters. Uh, then we have the articulation. Articulation for the guy, honestly, like the head goes left and right and up and down. The arms go all the way around and out to the side. Elbow to over 90 degrees, bicep swivel, uh, wrist rotation. We have a waist on the guy, tight waist on the guy, uh, you know, legs all the way out to the side, all the way forward, all the way back, we have the thigh sw swivel built way up by the hip, we have the knee to 90 degrees for sure, uh, ankle tilt, toe kind of forward and back, I mean, it's 10, he has everything that you could, I think, want for a deluxe, he is... A Again, too small, I think, really to be deluxe. He's much more than a Legends. In size, he's not. But, like, in mass, he's much more an engineer. He's much more than a Legends. But I don't think he's quite deluxe. Like, this is one of those cases I think he's kind of in between. But it is what it is. They're going to defer to the higher price. The articulation, 10. 7.5 and, and a 10. And finally, the transformation. Well, I've shown this innumerable times. Most recently, in episode 765 with Hubcap. I've seen the vehicle to robot with cliff jumper. I've seen the robot to vehicle, I think, with hubcap. And then we did bug bite as well, where I don't think I had to show the transformation. So he goes from looking like this to this. He looks like this. I mean, it's, I don't know. It's like, he's there looking all not like Bumblebee. I mean, whatever you want to say, at least this is the right car mode it's i mean it's the exact same engineering but obviously the netflix one embodies bumblebee better like i said this guy would have been bumper the transformation i've never been a huge fan of this mold by the way all of this can come apart in its bits and pieces and go on him just like with cliff jumper and bug bite and um uh, hubcap so I, i'm not going to show that again i don't need to show that again i don't think but it all works on this guy with the skis and the different blasters <coughs> blasters and thrusters and stuff we've seen it a hundred times I, again the transformation to me is about a seven and a half this one tends to go together a little bit better maybe it's a, maybe it's eight it's not my favorite transformation i'm not gonna lie there's a lot of engineering that went into it 
I'm just kind of eh about it. So overall, we had about a seven and a half for the look, a seven and a half for the transformation, a ten for the articulation. Overall, this guy's about a seven point seven five, maybe seven and a half, seven point seven five, maybe an eight. It, it it's fine, but I don't think it was necessary here. For those keeping score, we have a ten. We have I'm going to round it off and say an eight, just to make life easy. Right now, the set's getting a nine. Arguably, though, the Bumblebee could be scored lower, if for nothing else, because he seems redundant and unnecessary. And so we delve back into Beast Wars with Black Arachnia. Now, when I looked at the original in episode 814, I said, I don't want another copy of this because I don't believe it's a deluxe. It pretty much has the mass of a Legends. Yes, I know there's more texture detail here in the molding and there's more engineering. And I get that and I can understand giving up some mass to have those extras included. But giving up enough mass that you actually drop an entire like class from deluxe down to uh, Legends? I think that's too much, man. Traditional Legends. 35 grams of plastic. She's 38 grams of plastic. Traditional Deluxe, 84. Even if you were to accept the lower uh, kind of going mass for Deluxes, that's still about 74. So she's way below. I didn't want another one. And I do find her delicate. I scored the paint of the original about an 8 because honestly she should have these colored legs and a lot of people change these out with the stock release. I totally understand doing that. It's just mushroom pegs. Easy to pop out and pop into different colored legs. No problem. Then we have the articulation. Uh, the articulation is about a 6. We'll see if this one's any better. And the transformation I did say was brilliant. I said that was a 10. She got an 8. The original got an 8. What about this one? Okay, so we have spider legs that are on ball joints here, all eight of them. They're able to kind of move around and in and out. They're all the, like, one molded piece down there. I think we already probably all knew that. Underneath is how you attach her blaster. Not that it likes to stay in the best. It goes into little um, slots, like, up here on the forearm. Um, it, like, it's, I guess it's okay. It just, I don't find it likes to stay on. I, I, on either copy of mine. To do the transformation, we take her claws off. And I am showing this one because we looked at the transformation going from robot to spider. We have not looked going back from spider to robot. So I'll, I'll do that here. We can kind of close these legs down for now, just so it's out of our way. We pull out the... Uh, there's a, a slider mechanism and we turn the arms around and we can kind of push that back in. Then we take the legs and we extend them out and extend them out. We take the back and we pick it off and when we pick the back off we should be able to rotate out the shoulders and rotate up the chest and head that needs to go through the center of the body. The Purple, like, centerpiece of the body is, again, much like with the original, it feels thin to me, but that's just me. When we bring the chest piece up this time, there is no little tab to hold the chest in. It just frictions down to position. I think that's better. Less chance of breakage. At the hip here, we want to rotate down around. At the hip here, we want to rotate down around. And then we flip this piece up. I'm just going to stand her up. And then we'll look at her robot mode. And I thought it was done not quite. Um, just so we can kind of do this properly. You take the leg pieces and kind of adjust them. Not that there's much. And then you fold this down behind the head and bring the backpack up. And I suppose you could even take the blaster now and put it in there in her hand. So, uh, same kind of weakness as before. There's nowhere else to store the blaster that I can find officially. In this mode, I think that that's a bummer. I think the transformation is still a 10. It's still brilliant. The look, if you are looking at the like original release in probably wave one of 96, this is pretty darn close to it with the mutant mask head. I would never call this Black Arachnia. To me, the animation is the measuring stick. But I, I if you know the original release, then yeah, this is obviously Black Arachnia. Nine? I'm going to say it's a solid nine. Maybe even a nine and a half, and the the kind of details that are on the spider body, the it almost seems like a little bit of a dark blue wash is really beautiful and kind of metallic. I like it. 
In terms of the spider arms, if you are somebody who would like to uh, pop these off, there's a ball joint, or not a ball joint, sorry, there's a mushroom peg in behind right here, so you can take the whole kind of elbow and lower claw off, and then sort of inside uh, the shoulder is where you have the other ball joint, so you can pop it off of the shoulder. And put these on the stock release, we'll say. In terms of the articulation for her, again, the head can go left and right. The uh, arms go all the way around, out to the side, elbow, bicep swivel. Uh, the legs, they can kind of move behind however you want them to move. No waist, that's a bummer. The, take that out of her claw. This can go, uh, her leg can go all the way out to the side. It can go well back. Unfortunately, bummer going forward, man. I, I, I wish it could go forward better than that. Uh, thigh swivel built inside the thigh alike. We have super deep knee and we have the ankle forward and back and deep ankle tilt. The forward motion really, really throws it off for me. I scored, like I scored it before, about a six. I think that it's a real bummer having that limitation on the front. Now, that being said, I am being kind of harsh there and a lot of people are gonna say that's a minor gripe she's more like a nine and I totally understand that my gripe is 100% it's 90% subjective it is a bit of a poor design choice when you can't kick forward overall I'm gonna say that black arachnia is somewhere around an eight she's sort of average so right now we've had a ten uh, about a uh, eight and another eight so yeah we're doing okay so far with one to go and so finally we come to perhaps the most controversial entrant in this set, the one that perhaps fans want the most, that being Deluxe Fangry. And I say controversial because there have been a lot of QC issues with this guy that I've heard about. And it's a character that arguably should have been released a long time ago as its own standalone character. I think some people are put off by this set because maybe they only want a Nemesis Primal. Maybe they only want that Bumblebee. Maybe they only want the... Uh, black arachnia or maybe they only want this guy. I don't feel like there's a lot of people who want all four I didn't need bumblebee. I didn't need black arachnia like they're fine objectively Measuring them really for the most part. They're both fine But I feel like they were both redundant and unnecessary the nemesis primal I think is kind of a breakout star that I never expected I would like and then we have this guy of course next to his Titans return uh, counterpart uh, now, I looked at the original Fangry a long time ago in, in episode 246. It's not a good review. But, I mean, we didn't have a whole lot here really to work with, right? What is more appropriate to kind of measure this guy next to is... Titans Return, Grow Tusk. I think Grow Tusk is definitely the best way to kind of go about things here. And the reason I say that is because... They're very close to being the same mold. Not exactly, but very, very similar. The monster bot mold, of course, was used for all three of the monster bots being Repugnus, Double Cross, and Grotusk. But I feel like the fang reuse is most based on the Grotusk. I looked at him in episode 329, and honestly, I said that his paint was a 9.75. I said that his articulation was a 9.25 but that was uh, like at the time now it's probably more like a nine maybe an eight and a half um, and the transformation I said was a nine I liked it so taking this guy out of it we can look very quickly at kind of the articulation here the head has a little bit the jaw opens and closes but that's about it the wings they can move I think the wings are black plastic with gray paint maybe it might be gray plastic i'm not sure same with the thighs i'm not sure if the thighs there are painted or if it's gray plastic i i, I can't really figure out if the gray is paint or if the purple is paint either way it, it's done nicely uh this guy has the entire head go on the back whereas with grotusk the jaw comes down on the chest and the top of the head goes on the back also this guy has more hands there rather than claws and 
Grotusk has like forward facing claws. So there are a couple of little differences there. The arms retain all of the same motion that they do in robot mode. The legs can go forward and back. Not much out to the side really. Uh, the knees do bend. The toes can tilt. Um, the tail doesn't really do anything. The wings can move. So I mean it is I guess what it is. His headmaster partner, Briscoe, is inside of his tummy, of course. So we open... Oh, actually, we can't open that up yet. We have to take this back, and then we can open this up. And we're going to get Briscoe out and take a quick look at him compared to the original Titan Master. And these move like Titan Masters normally move. We have the hips and the knees pinned so he can get in a seated position. The arms can go out forward like they are here. They're on ball joints, but you're not getting much out to the side. Uh, on one hand, the stock release was molded in both black and purple plastic. The torso and the legs are purple. The head and the arms are black. There isn't a lick of paint on it. Nothing other than the giant robot face being green. We'll see that in a second. The, I guess the version of Briscoe that comes with the deluxe Fangry has been cast in, I think, complete black, and then we have purple paint on the legs, purple paint on the arms, and silver and purple paint on the head, so I think it looks really good. Naturally, you just put the arms down by the side and you fold them up to get the two heads, and the two heads look like this. And you can see they're pretty much the exact same thing. The green on the face of the one that comes with the four-pack which is the first one over right here. I think that green is a little bit lighter. I think the, the original Titans Return one has a deeper green. And because we've seen this transformation a billion times already, I didn't need to show it again. The transformation is exactly the same as it was with the other ones. As a matter of fact, there's a section where the feet, when they're open, they kind of tab in on the back. And I'll just show it here with Grow Tusk, if I can. There's a section where these feet tab onto a little pegs. I find that they tab on the absolute best with this guy. The absolute worst is probably repugnous for trying to tab, uh, tab those kind of feet into position to make the tail solid. But I find that they work the best here. So, in terms of look for the guy. So when it comes to measuring this guy for his animation accuracy, it's difficult because the only animation we have really is him being in a commercial. Otherwise, we don't really have this guy in any of the cartoons, which is a bit unfortunate. So based on that, I mean, the arms, the lower arms should be that pinky color with the upper arms being what they are. The purple here on the side of the head is correct. The green face, the red visor, uh, he should have a red visor, red eyes. The chest has more gray and whatnot here. That should have more of the pinky based on, like I said, based on one commercial, right? Based on his like original plastic G1 release, this is pretty darn close. I love that we have the intelligence, speed, and strength kind of read out there. This is pretty darn close to what you would want, right down to the detailing on the shins. The feet being gray, I mean, the feet should probably be that pinky color. I'm going to say this is a nine, nine and a half for sure. I'm really going to say it's a nine and a half. I think it's really, really uh, good in terms of capturing the character. The articulation, we have an arm that can go all the way around, out to the side, bicep, uh, rotation, elbow to 90 degrees, no wrist, no waist, uh, legs out to the side all the way, thigh swivel, knee to, well, really deep knee. Um, the ankle moves around, but like it doesn't really tilt or anything like that. So I'm going to say the articulation for the guy is, again, about a solid eight. Now, caveat time, a lot of people say that they're version of this guy cannot stand up. So mine, the leg goes back, I can shake it and it's fine. The leg goes forward, I can shake it and we get a little bit of fall on that leg. What about the other one? Not on the other one. Uh, if I bend the knee up, it holds just fine. If I bend the knee down, it holds. Same with the other one. Mine holds fine. Slightly loose, but not like other people have been reporting. So while I said an eight, 
for the articulation. If you're having the loose hips, loose knee problem, that's probably more like a five and a half or six, kind of a failure, right? I'm saying eight, but that is with the caveat of mine working pretty much properly. And then last but not least, the transformation I had said previously was a nine. I still think it's a nine. I like it. Overall, I'm going to say that for my purposes, this guy is about a nine. But if you have the looseness issue, this guy's probably more like a five and a half or a six. That really kind of kills it for a lot of people. By the way, since this guy didn't come with any version of like the, the blasters that came with the other ones being these, I'm going to give him his original Titan's Return Titan Master Partner Lad as his three barrel blaster. Why the heck not? So on the whole, how do I feel about this set? Well, we have a 10, a 9, an 8, and an 8. It's a solid set, but that being said, it's definitely not going to be for everyone. I have heard people say that they specifically want this Black Arachnia over the standard one because it takes them back to their childhood. And I think that you need that nostalgia for this Black Arachnia to speak to you. Some people have said that they want the Bumblebee because the Netflix version never did come to their, their area, so they don't have any version of the War for Cybertron Bumblebee. So they will make do with this one. Why they didn't include the kind of Netflix mold, I have heard that the license was only granted to use that uh, Beetle mode it, for like Bumblebee and for an individually kind of carded uh, version of Bumblebee. So that's why Bug Bite didn't get it and probably why this guy didn't get it. That's what I've heard. I don't know if there's any fact to it, but it makes sense. Fangry, to me, is one of the standout stars of this set. Unfortunately, he is also plagued with QC issues for a lot of people. I was lucky, and to me, he's a 9, but if I had the QC issues that other people have had, he'd easily be a 5.5 or 6. And then Nemesis Primal, the breakout star here that nobody expected. He is tremendous. If you don't like the Kingdom Optimus Primal, you're not going to like this. If you do like that, you're definitely going to like this. I will give this credit for one thing. With so much metallic paint, he looks brilliant on the shelf. Fine set, but not a necessary set. And here we are once again. So let's look at kind of each of these in terms of fi like some final thoughts. Nemesis Primal. Uh, I, I love him. I, honestly, <clears throat> it's not one I would have gone looking for, but... What a great use of the mold. I do like the Nemesis things, you know. I, I, I don't know why. It's something about it speaks to me. So, like, Evil Optimus Primal, I am down for it. I think he is great. Definitely beautiful paint on him. Gorgeous, gorgeous paint. Then we have another Bumblebee. I think this is redundant. I guess it was included because it's Buzzworthy B. Why they didn't just make it War for Cybertron Trilogy, I don't know. Um, why it was Buzzworthy B, I don't know. But I guess they had to put a B in there. I already explained what I think of this. It, it's not my favorite mold. Um, I, it's okay. Like I said, I might stylize the head a little bit and call it bumper. It's all right. The black arachnia, I just, I don't need a second black arachnia. She's fine, but I don't need a second black arachnia. And to be honest with you, I don't feel like I got my money's worth with the first one. So I, I kind of resent this mold. Not because it's bad, just because... For what the asking price is, I don't feel like there's enough here. And the more intricate engineering, while nice, like the whole chassis of her torso makes me nervous. It's a fairly thin piece on both of these that her head needs to go through, kind of. And it's tight. It's a tight squeeze. I'm, I'm not comfortable with it. I do, however, like that this chest piece does not have the little peg on it. I don't think that was needed. And obviously this proves it. Then we get to our boy Fangry, and a lot of people, man, have had a lot of issues with Fangry. And like, I get it. I like, I have one knee that's right. I have a knee that's. What about this one? I guess. I guess my knees are a little loose. Not like I've seen with some people where it's so loose that like the dude can't stand up. Mine isn't like that. Mine is actually in pretty darn good shape, and I don't. <sighs> Let's put it this way: they're not loose enough that I would say it's an issue. Um, it's, it's not. It works... 
that on his back. It works just fine on mine, and he can hold poses and stand there, and if I put his knee there, like, it stays, right? They stay, so it, it's good enough for me, but I totally understand how the experience of this guy would be completely ruined if you have the poorly tolerance legs. In the end, I like the Fangry, I like the Nemesis Primal, I don't think I needed the other two. It seems like a somewhat redundant set for the sake of getting a Fangry, but that's just me, and maybe you love all four. Let me know what you think about the Worlds Collide Pack. I appreciate you guys coming by and giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring, or of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube to become a channel member. While you're at it, hit the subscribe button. Stick around, man. Have some fun with us here on the channel. And don't forget that somehow, some way, each and every solitary single day, you right there, you do make a difference. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way, baby, right here inside the videos.